Hello and welcome to my weekly vlog. Thank you so much for subscribing to Deborah Kearse's Art Journey. Today I wanted to share a little bit of what I know about what it takes for me to light my still life setups. You can see that I'm working on a painting over here. I originally went out and purchased umbrellas, soft boxes, uh, special lighting, all kinds of things that I really found I didn't need from a photography studio. Before you go out and waste your money, if you're on the verge of doing that, I thought it might be useful for you to know that what I ended up with is this primary light source that I can control. On a tripod, I have, uh, it's like a $20 tripod, a $2 clamp from Home Depot, a clamp light from Home Depot, and a daylight bulb from Home Depot. Works great. What I do, I prefer daylight bulbs as opposed to the warmer, light that you get typically with a normal household bulb. Um, what I do is I'll use this primary light source in an interior room. I like this dining room because I have subdued light coming in from the sides of the room, but I have the main um, windows closed with uh, blinds and I can just use this light source to give me my main shadows. Um, you know, I prefer the lighting of the Golden Age Masters where they had a, a primary and a secondary light source and then they had light reflecting off of the back oftentimes into their objects. But if you prefer something like um, a Rembrandt or a Caravaggio painting where they have that really bold, strong lighting with the chiaroscuro kind of effect, the, the lit side, shade side, then you may want to find a room in a basement if you have one or someplace that you can fully darken the space before bringing in your light source. Either way, there's no right or wrong answer. I've found that with hosting a number of um, really uh, successful artists over the years to do workshops here in this uh, space, that everyone is very particular and everyone's got their own way of doing things. So that may be the first thing you wanna do actually is to take a look at other artists and see what lighting you prefer which, which artists are you drawn to? How do they you know, go about lighting their subjects? And then once you figure that out, you'll know better what space you want to be in and whether you want to have that harsh light that is a direct lighting situation, or if you want to use something like foil. I've seen people create um, little boxes or flaps with foam core or um, a soft light, a soft box type of thing that you would put around your light source to subdue or, uh, you know, more focus, give a more focused um, direct lighting situation. So once you figure that out and once you um, have your main lighting source, what I have found is that when I'm lighting a still life um, setup, it's much different if I'm going to be working from life than it is if I'm going to be creating reference photos that I want to paint from. This is actually going to be my family's Christmas dinner. So I'm not going to be able to leave this out, you know, decaying for weeks on end. So I'm going to be painting this from a reference photo and the camera doesn't see the light the same as you do when you're painting from life. So you need to keep that in mind. And the way that I light for this is I use a much um, stronger light in what are going to be the uh, areas that eventually when I paint them are going to be shaded because the uh, camera tends to flatten colors out and tends to not give you as much detail in the shadows or even in the lit side. So, and I'll also when I'm taking photo references, I'll change up the light and I'll oftentimes use uh, many photos. Well, every time I <laughs> pretty much, I'll use many photos and, and combine them to create closer to what I would see if I were painting that from life. Anyway, those are some thoughts and I hope they're helpful to you and I hope to see you next week.